following program on Ave Verna 24 is classified for general audience. It is intended for all ages. It contains little or no violence, no strong language, and little or no sexual dialogue or situations. The following program contains opinions of the participants and does not reflect the views and beliefs of the Verna Media Network. The network believes in a safe space for all ideas to be expressed without any censorship and on its duty to create such a platform for free speech. Viewer discretion is strictly advised. A very good evening and welcome everyone to another episode of Get Real where we talk about issues pertaining to you and me, the everyday Sri Lankan. Uh, we want to give you, I mean that has been a, a goal since the day we started this program to give you the different side to the story that is being stipulated in the mainstream media. Right now the biggest conversation is about the economy. Obviously Sri Lanka is in a crisis. Uh, we have been going through certain steps which has been uh, proposed by the Western um, organizations who say that this is the way Sri Lanka needs to be um, getting out of the crisis. But I don't know. In my opinion, it looks like everything they're proposing are things we've done for quite some time, for the past 75 years. And it kind of brought us to the level, the uh, independence of our economy was never garnered despite the fact that this country got uh, its independence in 1948. Tonight I want to talk about the domestic debt restructuring matter and uh, obviously um, not just go with you know hunky dory uh, kumbaya type of uh, uh, you know um, assessment of the debt re uh, restructuring and domestic debt restructuring program because apparently if you look at the news, if you look at everything, we've been told everything is good. You should be happy and you should be uh, very much uh, be, uh, you know, mindful of the fact that these proposals came and they did the best and it is the best for you. But I don't believe it. That's the honest truth. I know there's another side to this story and I want to get that and try to share that with you. So you will have the necessary information in order to share that. Uh, in order to do this, I've uh, uh, invited the former governor of the Central Bank, uh, Ajit Nimad Cabral. Good to see you once again. Welcome back to the show. Um, thank you for being here. Uh, governor, let me start off uh, asking you this. But before that, I actually wanted to get your reaction, initial reaction. Uh, you spoke about this as soon as the debt restructuring was done and it was passed in Parliament on State of the Nation. Uh, you came and uh, you gave your viewpoint about that. Uh, right now, uh, all the big businesses in Sri Lanka, the banks, everybody, the, the people who we trust to see our economy is telling, domestic debt restructuring is on point. This is the best version which we have got. Uh, I, I just want to share some views that has been um, mentioned. Uh, let's, let's listen into it. These are uh, members of our, uh, you know, the e people who are running our economy. Uh, let's listen in. I would, would like to congratulate the government for having pulled this off. Uh, it's uh, definitely a big relief. Like As you came in, uh, sir, you saw the smile on everyone's face. Um, and I think uh, the question we have to ask you is uh, how, how can we do, uh, how, what help does the government need from us? What are the things that we should do and not do? that you would like us to take back from this meeting? From the private sector, from Ceylon Chamber's point of view, I think uh, this is probably the best thing that could have happened, uh, especially uh, protecting the banking system, uh, because otherwise already struggling economy, uh, we would have struggled with the banks uh, having to have other issues. But having said that, uh, hopefully uh, the banks will now start making cheaper funds available to the private sector. I think that has been uh, not coming forth. Uh, so we really look forward to that happening. This way investments can continue. I think everything has come to a standstill in the last 18 to 24 months. 
so the economy to move forward, we need cheaper funds to coming into the private sector. So SLB welcomes the you know, classification or excluding mm. banks from the DDO. Mm. Uh, but when you look at, and also I understand that with, with the current uh, proposal, we can reach the GFN targets, that's critical. Mm. Uh, and also uh, this is a huge debt relief from a cash outflow perspective. The only challenge, the way I look at it from, from a revenue standpoint and expenditure standpoint, still uh, government will have a serious concern in terms of paying interest uh, for the do domestic debts. So the revenue broadening would be critical for the government. We have to increase tax files. I don't think we can run with the current tax base and, and reach the targets. Ara boru billo maupu aite terevi tawa davas dekhuna kena kote deshi naay prati hoga ta kiri mukhya ni mukhat dekila. Then banko ka padhiti khada agni mete no ki waar ata banko lotte no ki me kisi dek siddhu ni na me boru billo maune kabi nathar karan no. Governor, um, this is the best thing. What are we complaining about? What exactly uh, are they not telling us? Uh, because uh, I want to get your reaction. Apparently. Those are the top tier businessmen uh, in our, con our country uh, who are members of the association that are basically steering this economy. They are saying there's nothing wrong to be, you know, to be worried about. So what are I'm you amazed think? that businessmen are coming and saying it's okay to default. These guys, if it happened to them, what would have been the situation? If their debtors come and say, hey, I'm not paying 30% or 60% of what I owe you, you do whatever you can. Would they be happy? They say this is the best thing that could happen. Yeah. It is, of course, the best thing that could have happened to them, perhaps, because they are the 1% elite of our country. And that's, I suppose, from their point of view, it's something that we can perhaps relate to as they have not got affected. But look at the guy who has lost his jobs. Look at the people whose businesses are crippled. Look at the people whose livelihood is at stake. Look at the persons who have saved their money for years and years and years, including you. Yeah. You have got your EPF and you were hoping that when the interest rates went up, you would be able to enjoy a return of about 25-26% last year. And you are told, look, you are going to be only getting 9%. Next year also, with all these instruments which the EPF owns, which are yielding 28, 27, 33%, you will be limited to 9%. What if these guys, who are the big businessmen, were told, we are putting a cap on what you can earn. We are going to put a cap on what you can save, and that's all you are going to get. They won't be so happy. They won't be saying all these nice things. So I think we got to understand who is saying what. In the first instance, if someone says it's a restructure, it is a default. If you remember, Johnny, I have been on your program immediately after yes. the foreign debt was uh, was was uh, at a standstill. I told you that time, I'm sorry to say this because I, I don't want to be heard like that. I said very categorically, when you default on your foreign debt, you will have to default on your local debt as well. Everyone said, no, that won't happen. They said, no, 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 this, this is, we can have it in different compartments. We, we can do that, there's no problem. This guy is talking nonsense. These guys are the mawaning the billas, like someone said yeah, today, yeah. the billas. So you are, you are considered to be a billa if you speak what you believe is going to be done, what is going to happen. So it was very, very clear that IMF or the foreign creditors are not going to allow Sri Lanka to have it their way. You can't tell someone, look, I'm going to cut 60% of your debt, but my guys who are there, you know, they are okay, I don't want to cut their debt. It doesn't just work like that. And, and that's what we are seeing. That's what we are seeing. So finally, just after one year, we have to come to that. But if we had come to that stage early, we would have been able to go through this pain. But I firstly believe there was no need to have defaulted. And I have maintained that very, very strongly right along. And if you go that path, you are going to be in a serious situation. What if I tell you today that the debt that I owe you Mm -hmm. I won't pay. And I'm only going to And that's to pay. exactly what we said. That is exactly what we said. And then we are expecting people to believe us thereafter, people to have confidence in us and to come and uh, invest uh, with us. Uh, uh, that is the biggest thing because I'm not an economist. Okay. I'm just a, a normal guy who's trying to understand what's happening to my country. 
Uh, I have been given this privilege to come in front of a camera and this entire organization has given me that privilege in order to talk about what's happening to our country. I'm not looking at it uh, from your point of view or the president's point of view or the, uh, the point of view all those businessmen is seeing. I'm seeing as the person who goes into, uh, you know, a normal supermarket. My I have to budget every every month for my, uh, you know, essentials to make sure that food is there, we can eat. And, and we have to stretch the amount of salary that we get. We don't have rich aunties and uncles all around the world where we, they would say, you know, hey, Mahesh, come this way. You know, you're having a tough time. So come. So that's how I'm looking at. And what I'm seeing, which I can't agree with these people, is that when I go to the supermarket, when I go and try to buy anything, it's, it's, it's um, you know, unbearable amount of uh, costing. The dollar seems to be coming down, but we don't see that in the supermarket. Uh, everything else is being told like, you know, the DDR, everything, when we do this, everything is going to be fine. And we've been told that, you know, wait, 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 you know, we've just started. It's going to come. Don't worry. But we don't see that. Now, Governor, what I want to ask you is you, you touched a, a, a really good question there. You said defaulting is was not the option that Sri Lanka should have taken uh, initially the foreign debt. Uh, but when the new governor, the current governor came in, and I think I remember you, you exactly said this in right, seated right there. You have been talking to China, you have been talking to India, you have been talking to various other countries, getting swaps here and there. And the money was on, on, on the verge of being uh, given See. to this country. But the, this governor comes and said, what nonsense? We, you know, I don't know what uh, the former governor is talking about because, you know, there was no money. There was nothing here. So did you take that money and go? <laughs> what happened? Because Actually, what it's like this. Uh, if you can maintain confidence, you can A, get money. B, you can roll over the debt. Now, what, does, what happens every week at the Treasury bill auctions? Does the government pay back the money? to those who come with their treasury bills? No. It is rolled over. That is because people have confidence that it will be once again rolled over and over and over. So the most important thing for us to understand is we have to be conscious of the cash flow. And if you don't maintain the confidence, then you are dead. Because then people will ask for the money back. The same thing happens with the banks. If the banks, all the creditors of the banks, all those who have deposited money with the banks go to the bank and say, I want my money back then the bank doesn't have the money to pay because they have invested these monies in some other instruments as well. So what we have to make sure is that there is sufficient confidence maintained in order to ensure that that happens. But when you tell the world that you are not going to pay back your debt, then your confidence is blasted. So particularly that's what happened because not a single dollar came in from bilateral creditors or from the markets. And, we've and it won't that happen. We can't, borrow we can't borrow anymore. So that is why we have to now rethink how we are going to manage that. I'm not going to say what I think should be done because I think people are all very happy about what is happening and let them do that. I, that's, I, that's the way I look at it now because if they feel that this is going to work, uh, why should we go and blunt that? It, but at the end of the day, I can only say with this platform, it can't work. It just can't why? work. Because you have no confidence. When you, The first chapter in the book of economics <laughs> you will find is about confidence. You have to have confidence in the economy, which is the instrument, which is the government or any other uh, set of people who will lend money to Sri Lanka, who will do business with Sri Lanka. Just let me ask you, during your time, uh, you know, I think prior to April, we were going through this crisis and I know you were working hard in order to sort this out. Was default an option uh, at the time? No, moment? default was not an option at all. In fact, we had... Why were you thinking in that manner and then suddenly we see a complete 180? That you'll have to ask the powers that be who announced the default. In fact, even the president, as, as late as 28th of March, when he was interviewed on your sister uh, program on the other there are 360, he said, uh, if you default, you are dead that no, you will never be able to make your markets work. So I think he also understood that, but unfortunately that was done before he could come in. But the long and short of it is, you have to grow your economy. I said that in your program That's yesterday as well. Happening. That is not happening. If you have 30% interest rates, how can you grow an economy? 
Where is that? In fact, uh, the uh, co- uh, first quarter results showcased like we contracted 11.3. Yeah, 11.3 so. contraction. And on top of that, we had 8.4 contraction in the second quarter of 2022, 11.5 in the second third quarter of 2022, and the final quarter we had 12% um, uh, re- uh, contraction. Those are huge contractions yeah. which, which affect people. That's why when you go to the supermarket and come, you are unable <laughs> to make ends meet. And peop- people won't know that the economy has contracted and their money has lost value. But they will know when they go to buy. They will know when they go to pay the electricity bill. They will know when they have to pump petrol to their car. That is how it will be reflected in their see, lifestyles. See, uh, if this decision was so bad, and but that is not being reflected in any of the reports that are coming out from maybe the central bank, maybe the uh, the the authority, uh, the finance ministry, all that. Now, in 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 your um, you have actually compiled a, a report which you said analysis of Sri Lanka's IMF program of 20th March 2023 and um, intended debt restructuring program and likely outcomes in the future. This is, I think, a private document which you are circulating privately. But in this, you have analyzed the whole scenario, asking, you know, what are the consequences? Now, one thing you got right was the fact that apparently interest rates are going to go high, okay, because that's going to, but now it's again coming down. Uh, the governor is announcing that, you know, we have to keep cutting, 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 cutting. Uh, so apparently that is also, uh, the dollar rate is coming down. Inflation is coming down. So apparently what they're applying works according to this theory. Now how do you see that it's different? From it's that? like this. The impact of certain decisions naturally take time. That is why as soon as you re- decrease the int- policy rates, it is not reflected in the banks or the bank lending because there is a little time for the transmission to take place. However, you would always find that in the case of these policy decisions, you have to think far ahead. Now, How far? At least a year ahead. Now, when you when you fix the rupee, which the gov- fortunately <laughs> which which for, doing right fortunately now. the governor did up to the seventh of. March 2023. He fixed it from 12th of May last year, right up to that time. But thereafter, when the IMF program kicked in, IMF said, you cannot do that anymore. Because IMF says, if you are giving money to you, you got to make it flexible totally. Now it is flexible, but because of the because of the contraction of the economy, it has not depreciated as much as we would have liked to have we would have not liked to have seen it. However, now, what we, you will probably see in the future, when we start paying debt, now many you we are not paying debt. We are not paying debt now, but the moment you start paying debt, is that is that accurate? Because uh, is that like aren't we like paying some kind of? We are uh, only paying the uh, the the multilateral debt that is World Bank and uh, ADB, and we are getting some money from them also for the various projects that they have been uh, funding. So there is like a uh, like a. Uh, Hello, you know, there is, a, there is <laughs> yeah. one will uh, will set off the other. Yeah. Th- that has been always happening, so that's nothing strange. However, there is no other funds coming in. That's why there are no other projects as well. Now, when we start paying debt, whether it is the after a thirty percent cut or anything, I don't know whether people will agree to that. However, so at so some so stage, so just tell me now that particular proposal, the domestic debt restructuring. So, what is being presented? Is it finalized? Or no, no. let's talk about the uh, foreign debt as well. That particular proposal is it finalized? Because we've been told they will take a, uh, they will come down till I think nine percent. Oh no, they will take a thirty uh, percent uh, haircut. They will cut their debt and uh, they will, uh, you know, basically take it from the interest and that will. So you're telling me that is not finalized? No, that's not final. Now, if you take my analysis, if you look at the way the IMF has uh, done their arithmetic. They have said out of a total of about $28 billion, if my figures are, if I remember right, out of $28 billion which Sri Lanka owes to the uh, private debtors and the bilateral debtors, yeah. they are hoping to cut $17 billion. That's about a 60% cut. Yeah. Now, to Sri Lankan people at the time the central bank announced the debt restructuring, they said we are going to ask them to have a cut of 30% for private debtors and for the time period to be enhanced as far as the uh, multi, uh, as far as the bilateral data seconds or creditors are concerned so conflicting positions but at the end of the day if we were to have some agreement with the 
bilateral creditors and the private creditors that they have to agree to that now at the moment so you are telling me they have not agreed no they have not agreed they have not said anything so that means whatever we are discussing right now could be is a proposal of the government what we are looking at is the proposal which is i think they have said that as well it's just that people have not uh, no that's understood that's, it that uh, so so but they have said it's a proposal of the so government so now when when people like that say is we're happy this is the best you somehow how pulled it off people think i mean come on everybody is not economist in this country 22 we don't have 22 million economists if we had then we shouldn't be having any kind of problem like this they are normal people the 99% are people who is not trying to figure out what's going on and that's why they have given the power to our elected leaders to figure it out for us and take the best decision for these countries now it is being sold and told that proposal is done and dusted this is the final print no way mohesh i mean we we you have to be very clear about this if you look at there are three basic types of uh, creditors one is the multilateral creditors who are being serviced as you quite rightly know the second is the bilateral creditors so in the bilateral creditors china is one of the biggest japan then you get the few uh, people who are now involved in the paris club so all of them are there none of them have still signed off on this so what have they done thus far nothing they haven't done anything to say we are agreeing to this so people are still talking then you have the private creditors the international bond holders there is ISBs. no isps there are still some some uh, some have taken sri lanka to court there are others who have not said uh, anything about it yet they are all i think looking at it and i think we have sri lankan uh, advisors lazard and all yeah. these guys who are perhaps talking to them and maybe the central bank staff as well but at the end of the day there will have to be some consensus reached now certain other countries have taken 3 4 years on that the first part was for sri lanka to come up with a proposal which the imf actually said you got to do it by the 30th of april but we did it by 31st of uh, 30th of june fair enough i mean two months delay but still we did it now comes the more difficult part the first part was what the government says we are going to do and all thing all these guys have got excited and they are happy about it that's fine some are not happy already some have said some have said uh, we don't want to see this happening so there is going to be a certain process where this is going to be discussed and hopefully the government will be able to pull it off but that is down the line and whether you can get all these people on the same page i don't know you got to work on it you see a lot of people think debt restructuring is a easy thing i have done debt restructuring in my profession if you have three banks when did you do it well as yeah, as chartered accountant that's one of my oh, okay. uh, things so prior to becoming the central bank governor central bank governor i used to do debt restructuring for private clients who have difficulties in repayment then you have to negotiate with the banks from whom they have taken their money and then you talk to them no one has agreed to a debt <laughs> cut i must tell you i mean it's, if you put it simply if i give you 1 million rupees and you come back and say mahesh you get better forget about 500000 <laughs> obviously i'm not going to be okay with that that's the that's a simplified no, form yeah. right you ask these guys who were waxing eloquent on the tv saying it's the best thing if they are directors of a bank you ask them how many times have they given haircuts to their clients ask them what would they'll the tell answer you. be their answer would be they have not given they would have not given Somehow you ask the bankers they will not give they will not give and sometimes you may default and then you may go to court and court will have to uh, do the hair cut or whatever that's a different story but they will call for their powder flesh all of them but they are waxing eloquent here saying you know this is a great thing that has happened so you are, they are advocating for the country to default in fact many the, many of them did uh, i i know i wanted to uh, discuss about that as well uh, let's take a short commercial break i mean conversation with the uh, former governor of the central bank ajit nivad kabra we've been talking about the domestic debt restructuring efforts by the government uh, this is the untold story basically if you want to know the narrative that is being always said to you then watch any kind of uh, newspaper they wouldn't tell you exactly you know the other side to the story until it becomes too late and that's a marvelous uh, you know expertise of our media they will tell you when it's raining that it's raining 
they won't tell you prior. So let's take a short cup of tea break. You're watching Get Fit. We'll be right back. Welcome back, everyone, to Get Real. I'm in conversation with the former governor uh, of the Central Bank, Ajit Nivad Kabra. We've been talking about the domestic debt restructuring efforts. Uh, if by any chance, if you have the ability, I don't know whether you will make this document uh, uh, public. Uh, you need to read this, uh, uh, you know, uh, analysis of uh, by um, the um, former governor with regard to um, the debt restructuring program, domestic and foreign. Uh, he, the thing is. You know the things he's been saying from the time that the we defaulted and saying that you know these steps will happen did happen. So uh, he, uh, even though everybody tries to blame you, saying that you wrecked the economy, what they're trying, uh, what you're getting something right. So we need to have you know ask that again that question: Were we told the truth? at that time or were we again fooled because we are marvelous in getting fooled on a daily basis governor i want to talk about the growth of our economy because that's the biggest important thing sri lanka cannot be economically independent unless we grow and we come to a sustainable level where we don't have to beg for, from, from any any of this nation be it china be it the us anybody um, that is the real uh, path towards be becoming like singapore or something like that um, what about the growth because right now according to the IMF proposals what they're saying is that hang on yes there is a contraction this year 11.3% that's uh, that is going to happen but next year things are going to turn around things are going to like i think 1 or 2% growth and then the uh, following year by 2025 we are uh, on our way to the moon uh, you know economically independent sustainable and all that that is what we've been told and that is what the proposal is also trying to do now contraction this year what they're saying is right or what exactly is your view on that you see for, i first touch on the growth and i will talk about the contraction and but whether the effort they're saying is right or wrong if you remember from 2006 to 2014 in those 9 years We grew Sri Lanka's economy from 24 billion dollars to 79 billion dollars. That is the essence of what we did. That is the most important thing. So when you grow the economy, sometimes your debt is debt repayment is easier because your debt to G GDP in 2006, which was uh, 2005, which was as high as 91 percent, became 69 percent by the time we finished. So that is the way to go. You have to what, grow what is it right now. now it is must be 128% double of what we left at that time so when you don't have a income or you're not growing your income then your debt becomes more and more difficult it's like if you lose your job mahesh you will find it very difficult to pay your leases or you cannot pay your leases that's true with everyone so you have to make sure that your earnings are maintained or improved so when we have a debt problem first thing that you do is to find ways and means of growing your economy when you have to grow your economy if you increase your interest rates to 30% can you grow your economy who is the person who can borrow who is the person who can go and develop something so the first most difficult thing now is to get back the growth the one person can sustain that they can sustain it because they have they already have resources which are not borrowed so they don't have to worry about that and if they want and to that's what we have been seeing uh, you yeah. know hallelujah choruses sung by all these people absolutely they'll sing their hallelujahs anyway that is not only true with sri lanka it's true with every other country as well there will be that 1% who will be affluent enough to uh, make it but the, what about the 99% out of the, the small 90, and medium the small yeah. and medium the small people who are uh, doing um, a uh, kiribat sale or uh, some person who is uh, doing yeah. some repairs of uh, this vehicles and all vehicles or ve repairs of telephones how do they manage look at the number of businesses like that that have closed i had a, a person who i knew very well who, who had a tire shop he told me when i went for a funeral and he met me he said mama gema se vikke tar dekai 
So no, no. Uh, I mean, it's the same because even uh, I have a conversation with my makeup artist and she's telling me that apparently in February she did not have any businesses. There you Any businesses, but then still she has to pay the rent, pay, uh, you know, people. And he, she actually had three people in her staff had to get rid of them because yeah, she yeah. can't uh, sustain this they and, and, and um, you know, we don't make makeup uh, and, and uh, beauty products here so you have to import them uh, and it's very costly because people who used to come to her salon for let's say four or five times a month now have cut down to just one. So, Mahesh, if you really want to get real, call them for your interview. Ask them, what do they think about this debt restructuring? What do they think about these interest rates? What do they think about the way Sri Lanka is going? They will tell you the truth. Because when you hear from us, it doesn't really uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, get into their heads because they don't realize what is really happening on the ground. But what is happening on the ground is very important for us to understand. And unless you grow, unless you grow, you will find that a country cannot prosper. You cannot have 99% of the people. So, this proposal by the IMF is aimed at growing. So, how come you are coming up and saying that it's not going to happen? What are the no, indicators no, no. that you are uh, falling back on? It is not. They are not talking about growing the economy. They are gr talking about growing the government income. They are saying how Through to taxes. tax. Don't get that mixed up. <laughs> Those two. So the what? IMF is not here to fix our economy. They are not here to fix our economy. That is what we have to do. We have to increase our incomes. We have to see that we have more in inflows coming in. We have to see that we sustain the confidence in our economy. IMF is not going to do that. We thought that IMF when they come that But that was people, what we were told. No? Yes, we, but that doesn't happen anywhere in the world. Actually, the reverse occurs in most instances. When you say that the IMF is coming, people think that there is austerity. People think that the interest rates are going to be high. People think that the dollar or the currency is going to be depreciated. No one likes to go to a country like that. No one likes to go to a country like that. Mark my words. The <laughs> what I'm still trying to figure out, Governor, is the fact that we know whose genius proposal it was to default what I still want to know is, was there no other way to, we would have saved our economy at that particular point other than defaulting? Because I, want I also, I also had that same question because if you are a guy who takes, uh, you know, loans after loans after loans, and never gives me back any money. Obviously, the next moment, even though you go to uh, some guy saying, you know, I'm going to fix his, uh, you know, uh, financial habits, I'm not going to trust that guy. How much have I been told? Maybe the priest or uh, uh, the, the 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 you know the leaders of our faith, even if they come and assure you, you always have that doubt, saying, okay, no, it's not. So you take risks uh, and, and you make sure that you take calculated risk and not just be blind about it. So I, that was a question that I had when they were saying that when the IMF comes, it's going to basically, you know, marvelous economy, our confidence is going to grow, all that. So what, was there no other way? There is a way. The way is to improve your income. Take the, the normal person. You know, as you said, you are not an economist. Mm -hmm. But if you find it difficult to pay your debt at some stage, what will you do? You will go and find another job. You will work the evening. That's what mm -hmm. you will do. Yeah. You are not going to tell the bank, I'm not going to pay. You are not going to tell your guy that whom, whom you have got the car from, the lease, uh, you are not going to say, I'm not going to pay you. Are you going to tell the guy who, from whom you have rented out your TV, I'm not going to pay you. Instead of doing that, you will somehow go and find some additional income. You will drive a Uber. Yeah. You will. Uh, that's happening now. I know. So Lot that's of people why people are. are that. That's that's what normal, sensible people do. You don't go and tell the bank, "Hey, I'm not going to pay your debt." You are finished. Then your name will be put in your in the crib, and that is the end of the story. So, if that is what normal, ordinary, sensible people do, how come we go and announce to the world overnight? that we are not going to pay the debt. Up to 31st of March, out of the $7 billion that had to be paid or uh, rolled over during the year 2022, we paid 3.1 billion. 
We had a conversation laughter. I told you this. The first time you, uh, you were here after paying that $500 million. Uh, Absolutely. You were here the very next day and you were telling, you know. And it was not easy. Sri Lanka is not a, a guy who doesn't pay its debt. Absolutely. He, he honors it. You see, the other one that uh, I just want to. One more point. Yeah. I just want to make very quickly. Even on the day that the central bank was bombed with bandages around their heads, there. the central bank staff paid. Because that was the way that Sri Lanka was projecting itself. Now that has been gone. And once that is gone, as you quite right to say, people will look at us very, very difficultly for the next 15 years. So let me ask you uh, this. Because I, that question still lingers and I have not found an answer. Let's say you were the governor during the prior to April when you were there. The proposal to default came to your table. What is the process that you have to go through? Because apparently it can't be a one person job. There, there should be processes for this. What exactly is the process? Because what we saw was, uh, we sit on the TV, oh, we are defaulting today. Uh, that's what we were told. And we, you know, suddenly we, we, are, we didn't understand what it <laughs> means for the first time. And it's called dead standstill. Exactly. No, no, it was, uh, they used a completely different other Let's word. Dead standstill. Uh, and um, soft default. Soft was default <laughs> was, the, was the side talk yeah, that they exactly. had. But the official line was dead uh, so standstill. What exactly is the process to do that? Because I want to understand who people who are running our economy, the finance ministry, the government, the central bank. All these institutions are public institutions where they are liable to the people of Sri Lanka. They need to answer to the people of Sri Lanka. People sitting in those chairs are answerable to the people of Sri Lanka. So as a citizen of this country, I want to know what is the process? It's very clearly stated in our constitution that parliament will be the body that will be responsible for the country's finances. Then it's a parliament that allocates funds for the repayment of debt. Now, as I mentioned- Not the central bank. Not the central bank. It's a government. And government uh, has to be given the authority by parliament, by a, by a act of parliament. There is a bill that has to be passed in order to appropriate. That's why you have a, what is known as the appropriation bill, yeah, Mahesh. Yeah. So with the appropriation bill, power is given to the finance ministry to allocate funds and then use those funds according to the way that the parliament has voted. Now, once that is done, you are obliged, you are compelled, you, are, you have been given the power and the authority to make those payments in the way it is. So if at some stage you are not going to do that, you got to ask parliament again. Now, right, You can't uh, decide it by yourself? You cannot decide by yourself. How can you do that? Now, uh, that's what one thing I like about them going to parliament to get this approval for the IMF local proposal. debt. IMF proposal and also for the lo local debt default. So they asked Parliament, look, can we get do this? So the proposal has been now given approved. the approval by the Parliament. But the initial one never came to Parliament. Now this is a clue. This is a clue that when you are defaulting on your local debt. Should you, you ask the Parliament? Of course. You've got to ask the Parliament. So that's what they did. And I think what they did right was that President Ranil Vikram Singh, whatever said and done, you have to admit that he went through this process in the proper manner. Previously, that You're talking was, about the local debt. The local debt. Now, the local debt has will involve the foreign debt as well. Now, mm -hmm. because that is part and parcel. But that particular... At that time, that was never... It still has not been approved. Parliament still has not ratified the uh, uh, foreign debt uh, default? Someone might claim by not paying and the parliament having... The by next, default it happens. By default it has happened. But a decision of that nature, yeah. you got to have the parliament. Now that is why there was such a big uh, discussion about it. That's why we are discussing it. That's why you would have had so many people and all these guys coming on TV and talking about it because that discussion was Necessary. allowed and it was allowed and it happened. But earlier, suddenly we only saw somebody coming and uh, announcing it. Um. A little bit more to discuss uh, uh, with regard to the uh, domestic debt restructuring efforts and also uh, beyond that, uh, the economy um, per se. I'm in conversation with the former governor of the Central Bank, Ajitimat Kabral. This is Get Real. We'll take a short break. We'll be back.
Welcome back everyone to Get Real. I'm in a conversation uh, with the former governor of the Central Bank, Hadid Cabral, with regard to the current situation, uh, the economic situation of our country, and also the recently um, parliamentary approved domestic debt restructuring efforts. Governor, let's talk about solutions um, per se, because this, yes, it is very much in, in, in valuable that we know where we are in terms of our nation's economy and our, uh, the problems that we are facing, but you know, we need to know where we are going as well and solutions are being proposed here and there and this uh, IMF proposal seems to be, uh, you know, being pitched as if it is a solution, but then again, you know, you just mentioned saying, no, 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 there is, that is just something else and we really have to take control of our economy, that's good. Uh, if you look at the world, yes, they're going through a, a tough situation as well, uh, economies around the world are contracting as well. Uh, right now, the Ukraine war is very much impacting lots of uh, nations around in the region. Uh, there are conversations um, at large that is occurring that Sri Lanka also should be looking at other avenues of income and not just be dollar a dollar slave. Basically, this is what we've been talking about uh, a lot recently. Is the fact that Sri Lanka should be looking at BRICS for 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 solutions. India is part of it. Russia is part of it, China is part of it. These are um, nations that are very much invested in Sri Lanka. Um, what do you think? Is that is that a solution? I think all those are useful pointers to where we could go, Mahesh. Because having relationships, having bilateral arrangements, have multilateral arrangements are all useful in order to do what? To finally to grow. That is the most important thing in an economy. If you do not grow, then you cannot really filter down the benefits to the people. Because finally it has to be people who benefit by it, not just the 1%. 1% has already benefited. The 99% for it to benefit, the cake has to be made bigger and bigger and bigger. And that is what you have to concentrate on. If you're going to concentrate on that, you have to make sure that your macro fundamentals are made sound as well as appropriate for the growth to occur. So you have to have stable macro fundamentals. Your interest rates have to be stable and low. Your currency has to be at, at a stable level, not every day going this way and that way. Your business type as well as your business model has to be stable. Your relationships have to be stable. Not one day you are friendly with China, the next day you are scolding yeah. them. One day you are friendly with the US, the next day you're scolding them. One day you're friendly with uh, India, the next day you're scolding them. You cannot have arrangements like that. You have to have consistent, stable arrangements. If you have that, and then your businessmen trust you, not only your local businessmen, the small and medium sector, and the foreign businessmen trust you, then you have made your conditions conducive for the businesses to grow. If that starts growing, then you will find that things will become much easier. You will find that your cake is getting larger, and more and more people are able to take pieces of that. And that is what you need to see as a solution. So all what you mentioned are useful pointers towards that. But the fundamentals are the macro fundamentals that have to be stable. If you remember the period 2006 to 2014, I was keeping the rupee stable. I was keeping the interest rate stable. Many people scolded me. They said, why is Cabral keeping this stable? Today they will understand why it was done that way. Because unless you have those sta sta stability, people don't want to get into a country which is topsy-turvy. So hopefully we'll get that right. If we get that right and we are able to make sure that Sri Lanka can project an image of stability, then it will work. But if we project an image where we are defaulting, where in singular, I don't like to use this word, but singular word is very appropriate. <laughs> if you're polutianning, that won't work. So I don't like to see businessmen also proposing that because you got to make sure that you are honest, that you are able to deal with other countries as well as other people. And if you can project that image, then you'll gain the confidence that you are a destination to come to. Because the same way that we need bricks, and BRICS also, we have to think, okay, these guys are useful allies to have. No point us going and saying, we like to join you, we like to join the other one, and we like to join someone. The others also have to admit us. Mm. You may say, I want to go and join the best uh, uh, alumni or best uh, university, but the university has to admit you. So for that to happen, you got to have the prerequisites. 
So Sri Lanka has lost some of its prerequisites. We have to regain that. Do we have the necessary uh, means in order to get out of this crisis? At the moment, I think the way we are going and we are beholden only to the IMF and we are not giving having partners to grow. We are looking at how to increase our revenues. Increase in the government revenue and increasing the growth of the economy are two completely two different things. So we got to make sure that we get our priorities right. At the moment, I don't see that happening, unfortunately. I, I would earnestly request those who are in charge of the economy to grow, to find ways and means, even if it is in the small and medium sector, to uh, uh, allow people to do their businesses and to grow and find partnerships, that would be the way to go. And if that is done, Sri Lankans are a resilient lot. Yeah, yeah. Otherwise, we wouldn't have had 7% growth for a period of about four or five years running unless they had the resilience as well as the courage to do that. They have shown that they can do that and they have shown that they can improve the per capita incomes and Sri Lanka can be a useful destination. But that has to be coupled with the situation on the ground. Uh, uh, very quickly, I want to get your um, take on, there was another conversation that the central bank needs to be independent and, in, and uh, my understanding was it, it is already independent. but. Uh, apparently, they wanted to bring an act, and and that was you know certain clauses were struck down by the Supreme Court, saying that either you have to go for a referendum or, or you know super majority in the parliament along with it a referendum. So that bill kind of went back uh, into the drawing table. What do you think about that? Uh, is that a necessity? Central bank needs to be independent, but the central bank needs to be accountable. Central bank cannot say we are independent and we are not accountable to the people of the country or accountable to improving the economy of the country. They cannot have a facade of doing certain things on a theoretical basis and then saying we did so that job. That's what's happening most that's of That's what is happening. And they cannot only be responsible to the IMF. That is very important for us to recognize and understand. Central bank's independence doesn't mean that it becomes independent from Sri Lanka, but <laughs> becomes dependent to the IMF. So that distinction has to be understood very clearly. If Sri Lanka is having a central bank which is listening to the IMF, and if you read that IMF report, there are many instances where it has been very clearly, uh, the, the central bank's independence has been taken over yeah, yeah. by the IMF. IMF says, if you, are, if you are having a policy rate change, you've got to tell us. They have said, if you want to change the way your rupee is to be managed, you've got to tell us. So where is the independence of a country that has to go to some uh, official in, the, Washington. in Washington and ask permission to do those things? You are, on the face of it, you say parliament is responsible and the central bank is independent, but that independence is not reflected if you have a conditions of this nature. So true independence is also a state of mind. Some people uh, might have a piece of paper which says that they're independent, but every question they might go and ask somebody, then the independence is not there. So uh, you have to look at it in, from those different view viewpoints as well, uh, Mahesh. Uh, former Governor, thank you very much for being here. I really appreciate every time when you come here and trying to take the time, despite the fact that there is a backlash, uh, you know, trying to talk over you you still continues to explain, explain, explain and tell the people the, uh, the truth and what, what is required. I appreciate uh, you continuously doing that and hopefully um, when you said about the cake analogy, what I was thinking is that everybody's talking about how to thinner your slice rather than what you said. <laughs> <laughs> <Exactly>. <laughs> Basically, uh, you know, figure out a way to grow the cake right. rather than, uh, you know, taking smaller slices. Once again, thank you very much, former Governor uh, of the Central Bank. Thank Bhattabha you, Rahesh. Nice talking to you, as always. Uh, well, that's all the time we have for you tonight. Uh, I hope you got a, a different viewpoint uh, other than the one that you've been hearing every single day on news, on other programs. Uh, try to give you something different is our goal, and I hope we have achieved it tonight as well. Thank you for watching. That's all the time we have for you tonight. I'll be back. Uh, I'll see you back uh, on Sunday on State of the Nation. See you then. Bye for now. Hello.